Hi everyone, welcome to a new video and this is now we're getting into some of the brand new content we are going to be addressing in year 10 trigonometry and this is the idea of obtuse angles and exact values. Now we're going to do this video in two parts. So for the first video, we are going to look at something really interesting with trigonometry that sets us up for later topics in trigonometry that we're doing from the senior syllabus. Now, trigonometry we've been doing so far, all of the angles have been acute angles. So when we set up a right angle triangle, this is 90 degrees and the remaining two angles, since the angle sum of a triangle is 180 degrees, these two have to add up to 90. So these two add up to 90 degrees to make up the remaining 180 degrees. Okay, so, so far we haven't actually dealt with any obtuse angles. Now we're going to encounter these a lot throughout this course as well, but what we're going to do now is to introduce a way that we can think of trigonometry extending outside this, the parameters of a, just a regular right angle triangle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a little X, Y axis here, and we are going to introduce something called the unit circle. So that's going to be a circle looks like this. Now it extends below the Y axis as well, but we're just focusing on this top bit here. So what we're going to do by doing this is a new way to look at trigonometry, introducing us to what we're going to be doing in later years, and also identify a couple of what we call trigonometric identities. So trig identities. And we do that by looking at this guy here, which is called our unit circle. And this is a circle with the length of one. So we have a unit here of one that extends around. Now let me rub out all of the extra bits here because we're only focusing on the top for now. Okay, so let's say we constructed a regular right angle triangle somewhere here. So if we, for example, had a point here, some point X, Y, we looked in previous videos at relating trigonometry to, to, the, uh, to linear relationships and to our lines and how on our X, Y axis, we can create these right angle triangles. Now, if I have a point here, I can extend and so draw a line up to it from the origin, this point zero, zero in our, on our um, X, Y axis, we can construct a right angle triangle. So here I have a horizontal component and I also have an imaginary vertical component too. And remember, we talked in previous videos that when we have these axes, because they meet at right angles, any vertical line and any horizontal line are going to also meet at right angles. So we can say that this is a right angle triangle. Okay, so this is a right angle triangle with some angle theta here. Now we want to define, uh, we want to define sine, cos, and tan based on these types of, based on this picture that we have here. Now, this is a circle, so its radius all the way around here is going to be one, right? So that's the definition of a radius, from the middle of the circle out to its edges, out to the border, the lengths are all going to be the same. So this has a length of one here. Now, if I set up a couple of trig ratios here, 
I have a, um, an opposite and, a, and an adjacent here. Now let's call these lengths here x and y because we've set up these just random points here. So we can say that the horizontal component, this, this has a length x because it goes x units across. And this length here is going to be y because it goes y units up. Now, let's just set up a couple of trig ratios. So, sine theta, cos theta, and tan theta to see how we can relate these trig ratios to our unit circle and to our xy graph. Now, sine theta, we know that equals opposite over adjacent. So the opposite here is going to be my y. So that's y over 1, my hypotenuse. So we can actually say that, because y divided by 1 just gives me y. So I can say that sine theta here corresponds to how far up my coordinate is, what the y coordinate is. So this p of x, y, we can also write that instead of y as sine theta. Now let's look at cos now. So cos theta, I can write as the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So x over one. Now x divided by one just gives me x. So here, instead of writing my point being coordinates of x and y, I can also write that as, instead of x, I can write cos theta, because cos theta represents the x coordinate, and sine theta represents the y coordinate. And tan of theta too, let's do that one as well. So tan theta is defined by my opposite over my adjacent. So I have an opposite of y and adjacent of x. And that gives me y over x. But now, remember, we also said that I can think of the y as sine and I can think of the x as cos. So tan theta, we can also write as sine theta over cos theta. So, We've established a couple of trigonometric identities, and especially this guy here, tan theta equals sine theta over cos theta, that's gonna pop up again a little bit later as well. Okay, so we can define this for this particular quadrant, so this guy over here, and we can see that my x and y anywhere in this quadrant are going to be positive. So, we're going to write, we're going to call this quadrant one. So, in quadrant one, x and y are positive. So, therefore, all my trig ratios, my trig ratios are positive. They give positive answers. And that kind of makes sense because this is just our basic right angle triangle. We always used positive lengths, so we got positive answers. But now something really interesting happens when we move over to this part here. We're going to see what happens in just a second. So let's just recap what we've done. We've defined sine, cos, and tan in terms of this new unit circle. And every single new, um, new triangle we can construct, it has this same thing happening. And here we measure, so we can think of the x-axis here as the starting point. And as our angle theta gets bigger, our our line stretches sort of out here. So contrary to how we measure bearings with angles, we measure from the positive x-axis and the lines coming out make our, determine the size of our angle. So let's just write down, 
we can think of this part here as zero degrees and up to this point is going to be 90 degrees here. Now let's see what happens when we venture into the obtuse angles here. Now I'm going to write down three, um, three trig ratios um, and we're going to look at what their values are in this second quadrant. So quadrant two, which gives us the angle size from, well, it's, it's this space here, and that gives us the angle size from 90 degrees up to 180 degrees. So let's look at what happens with sine, cos, and tan. So say we took an obtuse angle, something here, so some angle here, I can construct a right angle triangle in the same way. So something like this. Okay, and we wanna see what happens, what is the identity of my sine, cos, and tan in this portion here. So I'm gonna write down again, sine theta, cos theta, and tan theta. And we're gonna look at the identity of these ones. Look at sort of what they're doing in this particular quadrant. Now, over in this section, let's look at my values here. So let's look at sine first. I still have a positive value of y because it is above the y-axis. So my sine theta here is going to be positive because sine theta is the ratio of the opposite to the hypotenuse. So if the opposite's positive, a positive number, the hypotenuse is always going to be a positive number because it's a radius of one. I'm going to get a positive value for my sine ratio. So let's look at cos now. Cos is defined as adjacent over hypotenuse. So my adjacent over my hypotenuse. But now What's the value of the adjacent going to be? Is it going to be positive or negative? Well, because I'm looking at an xy plane, I have some negative x value. So I'm going to get some kind of negative value of x over 1. So my cos theta for an obtuse angle, the angle here from... Uh, let's pick another color, green. From the starting point here up to here, my cos theta is going to be negative there. And I can kind of see that by just saying I have a negative value of x, a positive value of the hypotenuse. So my cos is negative here. And what about my tan of theta? So my tan of theta, we said it was a a ratio between the opposite and the adjacent, the opposite side here is positive because we have a positive y, but the adjacent is negative because there is some negative value of x in the context of our xy plane. So we have a negative number over a, sorry, um, opposite over adjacent, a positive over a negative. That means that tan will also be negative here. And this will change as we get to the region below here. But we're looking now at a different way to define the to define trigonometry. We're looking now outside of just our regular right angle triangle. Now, here is where we're going to look at a couple of examples Firstly, with a couple of trig ratios. Sorry, not trig ratios, trig identities. Now, you'll see these in your textbook, and we're going to take a closer look at these. So, we have the cos of 
180 minus theta equals to negative cos theta. Another one we have is that sine of 180 minus theta is equal to sine theta. And we have that tan of 180 minus theta equals to negative tan theta. And we are going to, if some of you have picked up on a couple of these signs, we're going to relate this to what we defined up here for quadrant two. So let's draw this out again. We're going to draw my semicircle to make it a bit nicer. And I want to look at something here. We want to investigate these a little bit further. So we said that cos of 180 minus theta equals to cos of theta. So let's just pick some arbitrary value of theta here. Okay, so 180 minus theta is going to be, if I draw theta over here, for example, so the same theta, same angle size, and 180 minus theta is going to be this whole angle here, this obtuse angle here. Now, we're going to say that what's actually happening with the cos here. So, cos we define as adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, so if I picked, for example, some value of cos, let's say, sorry, some value of theta, let's say theta was 30 degrees. Well, we're going to see that by looking at this angle, this blue angle I've got here, doing 180 minus theta gives me that angle. So I'm going to get a triangle, which is the same as my one here, but just in the second quadrant. That is the, the resulting triangle I can make here. So, since my x coordinate here is a negative, I'm going to have some negative x over 1, because this is my unit circle. My cos of theta, sorry, my cos of 180 minus theta, is going to equal to a negative cos of theta because the ratio I get of adjacent over hypotenuse is going to be negative. And that's why we get this first identity. And we also kind of looked at this over here as well. Now let's look at sine. So if we rub out everything I have, now, you'll also be able to see, so if you did this exercise, if you sub in, for example, theta equals to 30 degrees, then you'll see that if you put that in your calculator, cos of theta, or cos of 30, I should say, that's going to give you the same thing as if you did, well, it's going to give you Sorry, negative cos of 30 is going to give you the same as cos of 180 minus 30. So you can try that in your calculators as well. But, oops, okay. Let's have a look at sine and tan. So we're looking at the same triangle. I have a value of y here value of x here as well. If I did 180 minus theta, I would get the same thing happening here. So I have my angle of theta, my 180 minus theta is this entire obtuse angle. But if we look at sine, drawing this up here, 
I can see that my sine ratio ends up being exactly the same because my y here is still positive. So taking, taking opposite over adjacent here is going to give you the same value as opposite over adjacent here. Hence the reason why the sine in front of sine here, what I mean by that, I mean the sine in front of sine theta, whether it's positive or negative, that's going to be positive. So hence why sine of 180 minus theta gives you positive sine theta back. And finally, if we take 10, we draw this up again. Theta, I have y, I have one. My 10 is gonna be y over x. So if I take that same thing here, draw up my triangle, I'm gonna see that this triangle I get is gonna be the same as my other one, except one thing is going to change. My tan on this one is gonna be y over negative x, as opposed to y over x, which it was before. So that's why I get this particular last, I get this negative happening again here. So we have three trig identities here. So when I look at these obtuse angles, I get some new things coming up. And this is characterized by, by what I wrote here in quadrant two. My sine is gonna be positive, my sine ratio is positive, my cos ratio is negative, my tan ratio is also negative. Now we're gonna look at applying this to a couple of questions as well in the next video. And then we're gonna look at the second part, which is gonna be the exact values bit in the video after that. But thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you next time.